Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about how to get your edits out of Luminar AI. As most of you know, when you make an edit in Luminar AI, those edits are stored in the catalog and you have to export your image out of the catalog in order to get a file that has those images, those edits embedded. I'm going to walk you through that process today. So hopefully you can clarify for anybody who's relatively new to editing, new to Luminar AI, how exactly you can make those edits actually be in your images once they're outside of Luminar AI. We go ahead and share my screen and I want to say hello to Joseph. Hello, Amit. So glad you're both able to join us today. Up on the screen, I have a beautiful portrait. Let me go ahead and show you the before of this image and we'll walk through the full edit because that's a lot of fun to do as well. So here's the before image and here's the after. Just a couple of really simple tweaks to this image to make it look its best. Now, if I go and right click on this image and I say show in Finder, if you're on Windows, that'd be show in Explorer, but it'll take me to that raw file. And you can see here, let me go to a slightly different view. Let me look at this as columns. And you'll see that those edits that I made are not reflected in this image. So we pull this over to the side and you can see that this image has been edited. It's a lot warmer. We've cropped it. The original image does not reflect these changes. That's because Luminar AI is non-destructive and when you make edits in the program, it actually does not touch your raw file. It points to it, it references it, but Luminar AI does not actually hold your photo. It just points to it and those edits are previewed on the screen here in Luminar AI. Hey Julie, so good to see you today. So when you make an edit in Luminar AI and let's say you want to print that photo or you wanna share it on social media, you want to email it to a friend. How do you go from this raw image? How do you send them this file here? So one of the questions I get often is how do I save my images, my edits, once I'm done? If you go up here to the file menu, you'll notice there's no save button. And that's because we want you to have your edits kept safe here in the database. That preserves the history so you can go back and make changes if you want to. But once you export that image, you can go to export here. You can also go to the export tab. This will take your edits plus your image, create a new file that reflects the changes that you made in Luminar AI and create a new image. So if I go ahead and say save to disk, I'm going to go ahead and let that load up there. And I say save it to my desktop and I'm going to go ahead and put some low sharpening on this. I'm going to resize this to the long edge at 1920. And um, actually, let me go ahead. I'm going to res resize that to, let's say, 1,000. A little bit smaller. Let's say I'm going to share this on the web. I'm going to do sRGB, JPEG format, 100% quality, and then click Save. Now, when I go ahead, and you can see I've already saved this, I'm going to go ahead and click Replace, and that's going to replace my previously saved version. And you'll see it pop up on my desktop here in a moment. So if I go back over here to my Finder, and pull up one of these folder finder windows here. I've got a bunch of them open. Go ahead and close a few of those since they're a bit distracting. All right, I can go back to my desktop and here at the top is this image as a JPEG that I just exported. So if I go ahead and double click on that, that'll pop up in the Apple preview or if you're in Windows, I'll show it in your preview uh, mechanism there on Windows. And you'll see now that this image has reflected all of those changes that I made in Luminar AI. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jim. Brian, so glad you're all able to be here today. Welcome. All right, so that's in a nutshell how you get your edits out of Luminar AI. It's pretty quick and simple. All you really need to know is that your edits, your history of edits, is all stored in your catalog. It points to where your images are located on your hard drive. It doesn't actually hold your images. Your images are wherever you have them stored on your hard drive. And your original images, your raw files, or your unedited files are completely untouched. And the only way that gets changed is if you make an export copy and it creates another image file that has your AI edits embedded. I hope that makes sense. Let's see here. I've got a couple of questions here. Jerry says export menu items is another topic for Coffee Break. I agree. I'll go ahead and add that to the queue. I appreciate that feedback. Julie says, I made a folder in my pictures folder called Luminar AI and saved my edited images in that folder. I have subfolders in that folder like family, garden, etc., so I can find them easily. That's a fantastic method, Julie. Thank you for sharing that. All right. 
If you have any other questions about this, go ahead and put them into the, ch into the chat. Or if you're watching the recording of this after the fact, you can always put them in the comments below. The support team reads those. I come back and read those pretty frequently. And if there's anything addressed specifically to me, you can rest assured that I'll get the message and I will be able to reply to you. So never hesitate to ask me questions and ask for clarification. If I move too fast through something, I'm always happy to demonstrate it again. Now let me do a quick edit on this photo and show you exactly what I did to take it from, oops, I just switched images there. All right, take it from this, go back here to our original here, let it load up, give it a moment. All right, it's not doing it. Let's go back over here to our templates and see if the, my preview will load here. There's the before, and then there's the after. So let's go ahead and walk through this really quick edit. I'm gonna right click on this edit, go to adjustments and revert this to the original. And the reason I can do this is because all of those edits are stored here in Luminar AI. My original file is untouched and it's completely non-destructive. So I can always go back to my original image. Let's see here, uh, a couple other questions here. Uh, is there a way to do luminosity, luminosity masking in Luminar AI? At this time, no. However, we have passed the feedback on to our developers that a lot of our users miss that function. I really hope it'll be added back in the future. It's one of those things that I miss as well. So I'll make sure to add your voice to that and let our devs know that that's important to you. Okay, so to this image, I'm gonna start with a template and I'm gonna go into the purchase section and look at one of the template packs that I have from the Luminar X membership. Luminar X is an optional add-on where you can get monthly deliveries of skies, templates, and other really cool stuff. It's completely optional, but this packet that I'm gonna to use today is from one of those deliveries. And I'm gonna go down here to Perfect Portraits, and I love this one called Rich Look. And it just does beautiful things to this image. We'll go ahead and let that load. You'll see it brightens it a little bit, and it just adds a really nice tone. So now we're gonna go ahead and make a couple of small changes, starting with going into the Edit tab. And we'll do our composition, because I feel like the crop could be a little bit better. We'll click Composition AI to see what the AI recommends. And I think we can actually do a little bit better. I'm gonna pull that in a little bit tighter move that over a little bit. And I think that's a really lovely crop right there. I'll hit return on my keyboard to go ahead and commit that. Hello, Rick. Let's see here. He says, I can use Luminar AI as a standalone, but when I try to launch it from Photoshop or Lightroom, the picture shows, but no editing tools. Already tried reinstalling. Rick, um, I encourage you to reach out to our support team at support at skylum.com. You can send them an email there and they'll be able to help you with that. It might be that you just need to reinstall the plugins and that's a really simple thing to do. You might also need to manually install them and they can walk you through that. So we'll work with you to get that fixed as quickly as possible. All right, so we've cropped this image. Now I'm gonna go into my light tool and take a look at my camera profiles. And this is something that I don't do often enough, but there's so many great things here. It's almost like adding a LUT or a different toning to your image. So I'm gonna click through my raw, my raw profiles here and just see what changes these make. And you can see as I go over these, how it's changing the way those tones are rendering. And I'm just gonna take a look here and see which one I like best. And I really like this Camera Faithful, I think that was the one I chose, was Camera Faithful 2. Yeah. And that just richens the image a little bit. If I go over here to my history, I can click back to where I had just the composition. And you can see how the tone changed just by changing that camera profile. Now I'm gonna do a couple of extra quick things. Because this profile and the template we added added a lot of warmth, it made it look like they're, you know, it's very warm tone. I'm gonna to go ahead and go down to my portrait tools, which there's already a few adjustments added from our template, but I'm gonna go into the face settings, down to the mouth category, and I'm gonna apply just a little bit of teeth whitening. She has such a beautiful smile, and by warming up the entire image, it also warmed up her teeth. Her teeth are not yellow, so we wanna make sure that stays looking its best. I think right about there looks absolutely gorgeous. We can turn that off and back on again to see the difference. It's very subtle. This, uh, the template also added a little bit of face light, which I think is a nice touch. And to finish off this image, I'm gonna go up here to vignette, and we can see that our template already added a subtle vignette. I'm gonna make it a little bit more pronounced. I'm gonna reset this because I have my own way of vignetting that I like to do. I pull my amount center all the way to negative 100. 
I'm gonna make the size on this a little bit smaller. Bring the feather up nice and high for a nice smooth transition. And I might add just a tiny bit of inner light to bring a bit more emphasis to our subject. And then I take that amount slider and I pull that back and adjust it to where I think it looks really good. And again, you don't want people to necessarily notice that you added the vignette. It just ever so slightly and subtly draws your eye into your subject. So if we turn that off and then back on again, you can see how that affects the image and just darkens those edges to bring you into your subject. All right, are there any other questions? If you have any other questions, comments, thoughts, make sure you put them into the chat or into the comments below. I think this image looks great. So what I would do now, if I wanted to share this on social media, if I wanted to print it, if I wanted to get these edits out of my computer and take them and put them somewhere else, I would go to export and click on save to disk. And that'll pull up our export window. And once you export this in the format that you desire, those changes are then embedded in that file. And you have an image that you can take on to other software. You can take it to your photo lab. You can post it on social media, wherever you need it to go. So I hope that was helpful for you in learning how to get your, your edits out of Luminar AI. I know it's a back to basics kind of thing. And most of you who use our software, you already know this. But if you're new, this can be a really daunting thing to look at your folders and see that your pictures look exactly the same as they did out of the camera when you know you made changes. You just need to make sure you export those changes that embeds those changes into a new image that you can then use elsewhere. All right, let's see here. Above Rick's question, let's see. Rick had another question. Julie said, I wanna make albums. How do I change the folders that I imported and make them albums? So folders and albums are a little bit different from each other. Let me click over to my catalog and I'll show you. So folders are what's on your hard drive. So you can import a folder from anywhere on your computer or an external drive and even locally synced cloud services and bring those folders into Luminar AI and you're viewing them as they are on your computer. If you delete a, a picture from your one of these folders, it deletes it from your Luminar AI catalog as well. So let me go ahead and pop that up. Then down here, you'll see that I have albums. And these are, shall we say, shortcuts to different images. So if I have one giant folder of all of my trip, all of my images from, let's say, a trip to Italy. And when I was in Italy, I went to Rome, I went to Florence, I went to Sicily, and I wanted to make separate albums for each of those places. I could create an album and then drag my images into those albums for those different locations. I could also make albums for, let's say, street photography, architecture, and food. Three things that I know that I would photograph if I was in Italy. And then I can also bring those images into those albums as well. They don't move them on your hard drive, they're just shortcuts that send them to that direct to that folder, and it makes it easier to organize your images. Does that answer your question, Julie? I know it's a little bit of a, an involved um, concept, the other thing I can recommend to you is if you go to your help menu and into user guide, let's take a look here. Let me go here, view, let me hide that favorites tab, it's a little bit distracting. And scroll down into the categories here and look for organizing your images. So how to move things about, and here's using albums to organize your images. This will walk you through exactly what an album is and how to use it to organize things. Um, Julie says, I tried that, but it wouldn't let me drag and drop. That's interesting. That might be something you need to reach out to support for, support at skylum.com, and they should be able to help you with that. Um, they, uh, it should be able to drag and drop pretty easily. So that's kind of, yeah, that's how that should work. So if it's not, support will help. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any other questions, put them into the comments below. I'll read them after the fact and get back to you with the best answer that I can. With that, I want to wish you a great day and I will see you at the next coffee break. Bye everyone.